Marcos, um, long time resident, set for the uh, last 35 years, moved away to, to work in the city. Grew up in Port Dufferin and currently live in Murphy's Cove. I'm not going to have any commentary, just have some questions. There seems to be a lot of concern about uh, antibiotics for contraceptives. Is it possible just to have one sex of whales in this uh, environment, or is that not good for their well being? <laughs> uh, that's a good question, thank you. Since we don't know which specific whales would be candidates, right, it would depend upon their health, their age, all kinds of things, it is possible that they could all end up being of one sex. Um, that's entirely possible. If we had, say, mothers and daughter pairs, I, I happen to like that idea a lot, you know. Um, that that is a possibility. We can't guarantee anything now because it, we have to find out you know, which facilities um, are interested in collaborating with us and then from the whales that they have, who's healthy enough to, to come and, and who's a good candidate for all kinds of reasons. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. Seems that would maybe alleviate some of the issues around contraceptives. That is a not possible solution. Another question: the feces. Mm -hmm. You have a volume that a whale creates, a mass that those whales would create. I think part of the reason we've talked since the very first days about five-day whales in forty hectares of space is because of the carrying capacity of the environment and not wanting to overload it with any organic matter. So the, the numbers that we're talking are not arbitrary. They're designed around the carrying capacity of the environment for that and with expected tidal and current flows. So the, the dissolution that Lori spoke about earlier all is a result of those studies that bring us to that number in that size facility. Objective of minimal impact, is that? The objective of minimal impact, without, without any question. Absolutely. The other question is, uh, I have a 93-year-old father as well, and he used to tell me stories about how the harbor in Port Dufferin would freeze all the way up to the island, and they used to bring in uh, supplies on horse-drawn wagons for the community. So I've never seen that much ice. And with the environment that Kim mentioned, temperatures rising, Less, possibly less ice. So is that really a possibility of not being an impact? The data, I mentioned we looked at these 46 years of, of ice data, and clearly the trend is that the ice is less over the last 12, 15 years. But it is the case that even with all that we're seeing of climate change around the world, that you have more extreme storms as well. So while the trend may be in one way, We've got to be sure that we are well equipped to deal with the extreme storms as well because they're going to come. And the final question is the rising temperatures of the ocean, does that have an impact on viability of the whales in that area or this area? For belugas in this area, from the ranges of temperature that we see, no. Belugas live in many ocean environments already at varying temperatures at varying seasons. Hi, my name is Sandra Hartman Hatch. I live in Kwadi. Uh, I guess in the beginning I had some healthy skepticism as well, as I do with most everything. And so I did a little research with my daughter, who has her master's in animal science, um, but, and a lot of attention to animal health and welfare. And so on, on the internet we did quite a lengthy, lengthy search, and I guess it really satisfied both of us that your company knows what they're doing, we have lots of experience in this. Certainly, although my background is in human health, I feel like you have much, you know what you're doing in this, um, as it does, to, or as it pertains to whales. I don't have concerns about uh, the effect of oral contraception on, on, the, on the waters. Uh, otherwise, you know, all of us, uh, any woman who's taken oral contraceptives and pees, you know, we would be concerned, right? So I don't think that we, we have really have to worry about that. And I do understand that the people of Mushroom have a much better or a much
much larger, um, has a much larger impact on you than it does on many of the rest of us. And I think the, pit, the, the question is really much bigger than just our small communities. I think it is a provincial, a, a national, and a global uh, question, really. And small communities all over the world are suffering. And in our small community, my background is in health, um, trying to recruit for our hospital for many, many years when that was my role. Long before there was a shortage of nurses and physicians and physiotherapists in the rest of the world, rural Canada was experiencing that and we've had difficulties recruiting for some time. One of the biggest things that I remember is people would, A, like someone said earlier, didn't know where we were, so they thought they were applying to Muscogee <coughs> Harbor usually when they found out they had to come over to Sheep Harbor, that I never ever saw them for an interview usually. Um, but the people that I did see, maybe that came to work with us for a short time, quite often if they weren't from a rural community, because we know that people from rural communities are more apt to come back and live in a rural <coughs> community, if they weren't from a small community, they were bored, they didn't have anything to do. They didn't, there was some things here that kept their interest. They weren't <coughs> interested in hiking on Taylor's Head or kayaking or doing the things that most of us local people do to entertain ourselves. So I think that this sanctuary could have a, a spin-off benefit, not just to help, which would help to keep our hospital open, to help to, to attract new people here. Um, my children are both from the area, but neither of them work here. But I think these types of, of opportunities are ones that can encourage people to, to stay or to come and to live here. And with that, we have a better, a better chance of, of um, recruiting other professionals or other healthcare workers and workers for other things, small shops, other things that, that would be of interest to help to keep people in the area and help us to grow in our, our diversity. So I thank you. I'm fully in support of, of the, uh, the sanctuary.